Tina? Tina! Now, what happened? I couldn't do it. I'm talking about Tina. I'm in the road, just wondering what the hell's going on. No, I no, come no, down no, here no, no. and I find Tina, Tina, Tina right Tina, on the phone Tina. unconscious, and you oh, no. nowhere to be seen. Please. Oh no! Have you found an ambulance? I'm doing it. Oh, come on, baby. What happened? Right. Where were you? Okay, well, you just found her like this. Oh, baby, baby please don't leave me now. I'm making please, snappy. What you do is wake up, please. Exaggerating. Oh, of course he was exaggerating. How do you know? Come on, do you really think Paul would throw his own wife to the ground? Strange things have happened, look at you. Yeah, still, the police are taking it seriously, you know what they say? No smoke without fire. There's plenty of smoke without fire. Ooh! <laughs> well, Ooh. well, I'm not so sure. The police take most things seriously. I guess it's our job to work out how much is smoke and how much is fire. Our job? Their job. Kirk always wanted to be a policeman. <laughs> They wouldn't have him. It's too quick-witted. <laughs> Those they are just doing the job, aren't they? Same as all of us. Well, if someone makes a complaint, they have to follow it through. She's round the twist, though. She's not round the twist. She's got Alzheimer's. Like I said. Can I say something? I'd rather you didn't. I'm sorry I snapped at you earlier. I had no right. Imagine Kirk as a copper, eh? Hey, and he fancied undercover. <laughs> hey, he might be one already. We don't know. Sent to infiltrate this den of iniquity. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I got waylaid. I've just seen them putting Tina into the back of an ambulance. I tried to hang around to see what had happened, but... What had happened? I don't know. No one said. The ambulance moved away quickly enough, though. I've done so good. I don't know. Only half hour to go. Time for a break. I'll make a brew. Is he? Yeah, come, come on. on. Kissed. Hospital director, um, quite laboured. Airway in situ. Pupils sluggish but reactive. What does this even mean? Heart rate 120, BP 100 over 60. SATs 90%. What are SATs? GCS 8. Uh, she's got a small laceration on the back of her head, but no signs of trauma. Let's have a CT scan and bloods. Yeah. Boyfriend? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Any idea what happened? She stubbed her toe. What do you think happened? She banged her head. Any history of fainting, backing um, out? I don't really know. And this happened where, exactly? In, in, in the club we're on about. How serious is it, Doctor? How soon will she come round? Who was it? It was him. Who? It was him. It was Rick. Rick? What'd he say? I'm almost frightened to tell you. Just tell me anyway. He said your son's next. He said what? He said you're next. Rick did this to Tina? Where is he? I'll kill his daddy on Tonto. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. Put that away. I tell the doctors this wasn't an accident. Put that away. Cool your jets. Why should I? Why should I call my jets? The bloke's just called up and told you that he did this. Tell me you're not that stupid, Look, Tommy. What can he do as he was? Plenty. Why didn't he take this out on you or me? Don't worry, you'll get your turn. Why do you have to do this? Because she was there and you weren't. Why do you have to go back with everything we'd agreed, eh? If only you'd done what we said, none of this would have happened. What are you thinking? She talked me out of it. He had nothing to do with her. Why didn't you ring me? Look, I stormed off with the keys. But I left her in there for all that time. I didn't even answer my phone. Don't blame yourself. I thought you'd go on. None of this matters anymore. What matters now is Tina. So let's just pray that she comes through it. It's, it's mad, isn't it? Why is a jumper called a jumper? Why is a pub called a pub? It's short for public house. Yeah, but why is a house called a house? Oh, Kirky, you think too much. I know why nylon's called nylon. Go on. It was invented in New York and London simultaneously. N, white, lon, nylon. Is that true? Mm, one of them must have got there first, surely. What would they have called it then? Mm? Begs the question, doesn't it? Mm. Exactly. Mm. Hey, Fizz was telling us earlier that you always wanted to be a copper. That's right, yeah. Undercover, married to the job, 
with a beat-up leather jacket and a soft spot for the truth. <laughs> you undercover now? Nah, I'd tell you if I was. <laughs> Any news? I've been ringing in like mad, but I can't get through. Well, does anyone know what's happened? I'm none the wiser. Well, she was working earlier. Everything seemed fine. The scan revealed a small bleed on her brain. Well, that doesn't sound very healthy. Well, there's no great cause for alarm at the moment, but I'd like to monitor her overnight on ICU. She'll be sedated. Fantastic. Will she be OK? I'll have a better idea in the morning. If there's no deterioration, we can let her wake up and take it from there. You doctors, eh? Incredible. Can I see her? As soon as she's comfortable. Uh, will uh, somebody be with Tina at all times? Don't worry, she won't be left alone. She'll have a nurse with her all night. <laughs> Lucky Tina, eh? We'll keep you in the loop. Thank you, Doctor. OK. Well, all sounds positive. Did it? Well, she's in the best place, etc., etc. <sighs> what are we going to do? We've got no choice. We're going to have to find another way of getting all the Rick's money. Maybe I'll take the car to the market. Now, don't get clever. Well, what then? We ask Tyrone. That's not happening. You're not borrowing it to buy a car, Tommy. You're borrowing it to save your life. They've got a baby on the way. We'll have a funeral on the way if we don't do something soon. Maybe Tyrone can pay for that. Pick you out a nice coffin. I'm, I'm sorry, but, but I can't. That money that me dad left him, that was family money. He left everything to Tyrone. I didn't get a penny. Does that sound fair to you? No. I'm sorry? I said no. It doesn't sound fair. If anybody deserves that money, we do. You do. And you've never needed it more than you do right now. So, forget your pride. Forget decency. Knock on Tyrone's door tonight. Otherwise, we're all finished. Tommy? Is he in? Is it? They've kept us sedated overnight, but we'll, we'll know more tomorrow. We're just hoping there's no more bleeding on her brain. Her brain? Is it that serious? Doctors seem pretty hopeful. How did it happen? We don't know. I th think she fell. <sighs> Ty, I, um, I need to borrow some money. What, for a cab fare? Because I'll give you a lift, mate. It's no problem. No, it's not for cab fare. What's it for, then? I can't tell you. OK, so how much? Nine grand. What? I know it's a big ask, but th that money that Jack left you, you still got it? Well, it's none of your business. It was my granddad. Oh, right, so that money's rightfully yours, is it? No, I just... I need to borrow it short term. So tell me what it's for. I can't. And then I can't help you. Well? Um, she had an accident. We, we think she fell. You think? I'm going to take him back there now. OK. Yeah. Come on. I'll give you a call later. We should be all right. I don't know. Going for? I think I'm going to hand over money without knowing why. Money that I should be spending on cots and push chairs and those things you throw over your shoulders so they're not sick All right, on so you. you don't want to help me? Fine. Let's just go to the hospital. Right, OK. Let's go. Tina didn't fall. She was attacked by the person we owe money to. What? Please. You and Tina owe money? No, me and my dad. Oh, right. Well, and I'm guessing it's not the bank manager. No. No. So you and Terry lend money off a loan shark, and Tina ends up in hospital. Awesome. Before you start, it's not my dad's fault. No, no, of course it wasn't. Because if he hadn't shown back up in Weatherfield, she'd still be in hospital, so wouldn't I, I don't want a lecture. No, you just want my money. I warned you so many times. Why should I pick up the pieces? Because I'm desperate. Yeah, we'll call the police. The second Rick finds out I call the police, I'm finished. We all are. Me, Tina, my dad. Then you can spend your money on my funeral, eh? <laughs> pick me out a nice casket. Look, I, I don't want to risk it. I just want him out of my life. Well, what about the loan shark? Any news? No, no, just the same. Look, I can tell you're itching to know. About what? Don't insult me. Tyrone's agreed to lend us the money. Tyrone, what can I say? How about thank you? Put it there. No, I'd rather not. Look, I've told him what his force is, so there's no need to pretend. Like giving you lunch to the school bully, Ty. Well, I never gave nine grand to the school bully. I don't know about you. I was a school bully. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> Nobody says anything to Kirsty, right? Of course not. Tell women nothing. 
We'll start paying you back immediately. Good, because I'm going to need it. Yeah, he's got my cots and prams and everything. I understand. Do you? It goes to the bank in the morning as soon as you can. Tyrone, anything you ever need, you come to me, eh? Yeah, I can't see that happening, can you? Come on, let's go see her. I wonder what she's thinking. Tommy! Rita you reckon she can hear us, but I don't know what to say to her. You were out early this morning. I was uh, calling you. I couldn't sleep. I would rather be here. Uh, I was going to run into the bank uh, with Tyrone. No, it's OK. I'll call him later. Didn't want to miss her coming round. Is that what the doctor said? They're bringing her round? No, well, not yet, but today, hopefully. I mean, we'll know more when the doctor sees her later. So, uh, we'll get to the bank now, then, yeah? Dad, it's OK. I'll get you the money. Don't worry. Don't worry. Rick wants that cash. When she comes round, she won't want to find you in the bed next to her in a worse state than her. Or in the morgue. She might be able to hear you. Stop stressing her. So let me pay off the scummy loan shark. The bank's not even open yet. I'm on it. Where are you? I was thinking of the boss what I should say to you if you could hear me. I should wind you up so you'd wake up and wallop me. Just keep yourself still. No. You can't hear me, can you? You wouldn't let me sit here this scared. I love you. Please keep fighting. Please, please don't die. I thought you were a mate at Tommy's. I'm more his mate than you've ever been his dad. So where's the money? It's for him. Not you. I'm looking out for him. <laughs> because of the danger that you put him in. It's you putting him in danger, playing at Meccano, instead of getting the cash he needs. That you need, you mean? Rick goes for soft targets. Look at Tina! So I ask you again, where's the money? <laughs> I know Tommy's rang you. Yeah, well, I couldn't get free this morning. And I couldn't exactly go telling Kevin, could I? So when he's finished his dinner, I'm going. But I'm handing nothing to you. This is between Tommy and me. Take your time! It's not like Tommy might die while you're waiting for Kevin to finish his tuna and mayonnaise, is it? Chef says... Oh, get this down, you. I'm hungry. Really. You need feeding. I know you boys, when you're upset, you forget to look after yourself. Look, I, I couldn't. Oh, sweetheart. You're full of fear, that's why you're not hungry. I saw it in our Gary when he was going off to fight, but fear won't keep your body moving. And it won't keep you strong for Tina. Will it? She'll be all right. You'll see. <coughs> Mate, thank you. It's OK. I know Jack won't have seen you in trouble. Don't let Terry think Jack would have done out for him, right? No, of course not. Are you going to eat that or what? We've been to see Tina. We thought you'd be there. I had some stuff to do. Well, it must have been important to bring you back here when they tried to bring her round. She's conscious. They said they'd phone. Not yet. The doctor said he's going to start the process. It's a flaming answer for me. She's never run. Yeah, I mean, Weatherfield General. Sorry! It's funny, isn't it? Wherever you are, there's always trouble. Where's he going? He said he was meeting Tyrone here. Do you know, I look at you, and I look at them nurses, and the care and dedication, and the doctor worrying about bringing that poor girl out of her coma. They're bringing Tina round. Going to be... Just look at him, making out that he cares. He's a waste of skin and bone, him. Always has been. Wait! They're bringing around the money. But I've got it. 
Give it me. Look, I'm going to go show her that I've got it. That we've got Rick off our backs. That we've got nothing to be scared of. He's here. What? Rick. I just seen him in the car park. I had to stop him from coming up. I don't know if it was you or her that he was trying to get, but... No, it's okay. I told him that we had the money. I talked him down. He's waiting for me now. Give it here. I'll deal with him. You go and be with Tina. You tell him if I ever set eyes on him again. You won't. So, give my love to Tina, won't you? Mm -hmm. something wrong? What's happening? It's okay. We're monitoring her, that's all. Why isn't she conscious? You have to be patient. How body responds will tell us how bad the damage is. What does that mean? That she, she might not come round? We hope she will. We're keeping a close eye on her. Like I say, we need to be patient and hope for the best. Why is she still like this? It's only been a few hours. How long does it take her? She's going to wake up, isn't she? Well, she's no longer sedated. Her blood seemed normal. She should be responding by now. What does that mean? <coughs> Tina? Hello, Tina. You're in hospital. Let's prepare for extubation and transfer her onto ward. Jen, think you'll be okay, all right? Oh, okay. You'll be fine. All right. Sorry. Oh, Tina. If you don't stop staring at me, I'll ask the doctors to put me back under. <laughs> I'm never going to let anyone hurt you ever again. Are you safe now? He's gone. I, I borrowed the money out of Tyrone to make him go away. Yeah, I know. I should kill him, but it's like a cockroach. You kill one, hundred turn up with a few. He's gone. For good. I'm sorry. Sorry? <sighs> what for? I think you'll miss him. Who the hell misses a lone shark? We're talking about your dad. No, I'm not. I'm talking about the guy who did this to you. But my dad has got the money, he's paying Rick off. No, your dad did this to me, Tommy. It wasn't Rick. It was Terry. Time. And all that bull about Rick. Oh, she's talking then. Well, that's got to be a good sign. She's going to die, you scumbag. Oh, she's a survivor. I knew she'd be fine. You'd have just left her for dead. Oh, why in your neck in your drama, Queen? All you care about is the money. Everyone said along you were a scumbag, and I was just a clown who kept the faith. Out of the way. No chance. So. It was you. All along. She's confused. She had a bump on the bounce, remember? You as good as knocked her over, then you were going to leave her for dead. Is that what she told you? That's concussion talking, kid. But if I hadn't turned up. She fell. She cracked her nuts. Yeah, and you were just going to leave her there. I don't do post-mortems. No pun intended. You were just going to do the off with Ty's money. Duckworth money. The only ever perk of being a Duckworth. <laughs> you were just going to disappear. I don't do goodbyes. Yeah. The schmaltzy stuff. <laughs> you left Tina for dead, and now you're going to leave me for dead. You don't half build up your part. I stuck up for you. I had your back. Look, do I wish that things had turned out different? You betcha. Nothing's changed. You're still the same lowlife who sold me when I was a baby. It wasn't as black and white as that, actually. They gave you every penny they had. Well, he did a good job. Except you could do with a bit of toughening up. Why well, was I determined to find any good in you, eh? Don't beat yourself up, son. Another time, another place, we'd have made a good team. Another planet. Give. Give me the money, son. I'm no son of yours. I'm sorry you feel that way. But that is my money, fair and square. That loan shark killed Tina's dad. He don't take no prisoners. It's me he's after. You and your bird are small fry. That's bull and you know it. I know that you've got my money and I should be on the M6. Dad, he'll kill us. Always building up your part. If Rick wants a big box, you think he's going to come after a minimum wage grease monkey? Hand over the money! This isn't time, Dad. Either it's a relationship with me or nine grand in cash. <laughs> You're actually doing this, aren't you? Leaving me up to my neck in it. You're better off without me, Tom. <sighs> me or the money? That was a no-brainer for you, wasn't it? I'm bad news, son. The good news is 
that you're nothing like me. Selling you when you were a baby was the best thing I ever did. You're a good kid, Tom. You're scum of the earth. Ain't that the truth? See you, kidder. What do you want? Well, I've heard some stupid questions in my time. Yeah, we'll try Terry Duckworth. Where is he? Probably halfway up the M6 by now. I don't like your attitude. Yeah, well, I'm skinned. Not even an emergency fiver. My granny always had a safety pin. First class stamp and emergency fiver in a purse. Fascinating. Tina will be expecting a bunch of flowers, won't she? Ward 3G, the receptionist said. You stay away from her. That depends on you, Thomas. <sighs> I don't owe you a penny. Your dad does. So go find him. No need. Bird in the hand and all that. How many more times? I've got no money. Tough. The debt passes from father to son, like a war medal or family heirloom. Or eczema. You don't get it, do you? I'm skint. Don't sweat the small stuff. I want my nine grand back, and you're the only man for the job. I'll sort the logistics. Say hi to Tina. What did Efford say for himself? Plenty. Look, look, forget him. How's your head? Tell me. The main thing is that he's gone. He gave the money to Rick, then lived it. The whole nine grand? Yeah. Are you sure? I saw it with my own eyes. <sighs> we don't owe Rick a penny. Ah, oh, that's a way off. Tell me about it. I can't believe it. Yeah, we'll believe it. All you need to do now is rest up. Come on, we want peace. I really thought your dad was going to run off with that money, you know. He was. I had to guilt trip him into doing the right thing. <sighs> that hero. Hmm? Any pain? Um, headache. That's all. Oh, poor Tyrone. All his inheritance is just gone. Don't. How will we ever pay him back? Ask me another one. Gotta stay here. I'll live. No thanks to you, Dad. I don't have a dad anymore. You're my family. You and Ty. You stay with me while I fall asleep. Of course, well. I'm going nowhere. All right, okay. Well, can I leave a message then? <laughs> yeah, just tell the Tommy's called and I'll be in. All right, see you a bit. Right. So, what's the crack? Yes, she had a good night. Nice one. Mm. So, she might be well enough to come home tomorrow. Does she know your dad's done one? Mm hmm. I'm glad to see the back of him, and she won't be the only one. So many people told me he was scum, but would I listen? Yeah, it's like me, Mum and Paul. We're told to stay clear. I bet she wishes she had now. She was seen the state of her yesterday. She was in her own mess. She was in bits. Nightmare. She's pretty much telling the plot it was her fault. You've got to be careful with things like this. Everyone is always looking for someone to blame. Yep. Hi, mate. How's tea? Yeah, she's good. I might let her out tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. So it's all done then? Done and dusted. So long sharks off your back. Yeah, thanks to you. <laughs> Terry's already put Tina in hospital. Couldn't risk the same happening to you, or worse. Listen, mate, I'm dead grateful. Yeah, that you'd have done the same for me. Look, I'll pay you back as soon as I can. Don't stress about it. Tight, I'm serious. <sighs> Look, you saved our skin. I'll never forget that. Yeah, we'll make sure you forget when Curse is about. Because if she finds out I'm dead meat... Terry's gone. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. Turns up, causes total chaos, and then does one he's a scumbag. To be honest, I'm relieved. He's nothing to me now. You're my family. <laughs> Clear off, go on. We'll see you, missus. Everything's sorted, eh? Happy days. I'm sorry how things have turned out with your dad. What can you say? Guys are waste of space. I know. I 
think we should report him to the police. No, there's no point, babe. You put me in here. I said I'm sorry. Tommy, it's not your fault. We can't just let him get away with it. He'll be miles away by now. Wouldn't even know where to start. The police would. Is this how he goes through life? He takes what he wants and then he hurts people who get in the way. He's gone, T. We're free of him. Why don't we just try and move on, eh? Easy for you to say. You were the one left half dead. But we call the police. Everything gets dragged up again. Rick, the money. It'd be like poking a Rottweiler with a massive stick. I suppose we should count our blessings. Rick's been paid, he's off our backs. We'll never have to see his evil face again, yeah? Come here. Hi, Tommy. How's it going? At ease there, mate. You're looking a bit tense. Just leave me alone. Charming. You want to watch that? Could hurt a bloke's feelings. Look, I've told you. Me and you need a little chat. You owe me. No, my dad owes you. You're his blood. Unfortunately for you, this is your inheritance. Look, I've already told you I'm brassic. Well, I think I've got a solution to our little problem. You used to work at that garage, didn't you? Yeah. You need to get your job back. What? Why? Because I said so. I can't just go in there and demand... Get my... your job back, sit tight and wait. This is mad. I don't want to be involved in anything dodgy. How's the lovely Tina? On the mender help? You leave her out of it. She had a lucky escape this time. There are some very bad people out there. If they don't get what they want, things can turn nasty. Right, Kev. Hello. It's big time club owner. Big time idiot, that's all right. I could have told you that. Yeah, well, plenty did. Look, I was just wondering if I could get my job back. Well, I'll tell you the problem I've got with that, Shella. What? I got talked into employing you once before when I didn't want to. Yeah. No, and I got proved wrong. Because you was keen and willing to learn. But I haven't changed. Well, you have in my eyes. Because whenever I see your face, I see Terry's son. So forget it, no chance. Ty. You can't blame him the way you are, Tal. Yeah, but I need to be earning. Can't, can't you have a word? I can try, but can't promise he'll listen. But I just thought me and you could come to some sort of arrangement when I pay you back what I owe you so much a week. Right, well, I'll give it a go. But you can be stubborn, Kev. <laughs> oh, hi, mate. But Stella, can we get a couple more pints over here? Please? Yeah, of course you can. So, um, speak to Kevin. Yeah. And he took some persuasion. <laughs> Come here, you. Nice one. Top lad. Hey, I owe you one. I've not even told you yet. Yeah, but he said yes, all right. He did say yes. He did, but he also said one more thing, which I agree with. Any more waltzing off, and that's it. No more chances. I, I wouldn't expect any. I promise you, won't do it again. Be off. Told Kirsty I'd only be ten minutes. Right, well, uh, thanks again, and I won't let you down this time. I promise. See you in the morning. You will. Yeah? Oh, yeah, it's, um, it's Tommy Duckworth. All right. Have you got some good news for me? Well, I hope so. I've got my job back at the garage. That is good news. So what exactly do you want me to do? Ah, yeah, it won't take a minute. Yeah, well, first day back and you're covering for him. Yeah, he's fetching Tina. Yeah, I know, but he's got a bit of ground to make up. That's all I'm saying. Oh, here he is now. Hi, T. How are you? Yes, surviving. Can't wait for me on bed. All right, Tina. Okay. We're going to see you in work today, what? Yeah, I'll put in a couple of hours later, I promise. Oh, good. You put your job back? Yeah, a bit off and tie. Oh. There's nothing. Look, I'll bob round like where the box of chalk is. Oh, no, no more chocolates. I've eaten my own body weight. <laughs> right, bottle of wine then. Now you're talking. Come on, you. Come on, get cold. Okay. See you, Ty. It's so nice to be home. Yeah, it's nice to have you home. I'm so proud of you, you know. <laughs> How can you be proud of me? Oh, well, it must have taken guts for you to so ask for your job back. I was an idiot's jacket in the first place. Being an idiot about everything. No, you. You trusted your dad, that's all. Look, I know it's going to take time for you to pay Tyrone back, but at least you're back in the straight and narrow way. We'll be okay. Come here. 
Mm. Who's that? Oh, it's Kevin. Oh. But I should, uh, I should get back over there. <laughs> no rest for the wicked, eh? <laughs> Say that again. So, you've got tea? Check. Toast? Check. Girly magazines? Damn it, I think you pretty much covered everything. Uh, no, I've not even told you about the egg butter I've got you in the fridge. They're well nice. And crisps and a cupcake on the side. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just fed up of relying on you. I just want to get my life back on track, you know, get everything straight. Everything back to normal. Yeah, well, don't run before you can walk, T. I know you get bored. One day at a time, I know. Look, I've got to get back to the garage, but if I can nip out during the day, I will, all right? Okay. Otherwise, we'll see you tonight, yeah? <laughs> but then me and you can have a nice evening stuffing our faces and watching telly, which reminds me, these <laughs> need a defrosting. Brilliant. See ya. Hey, go, Sack. Cheers, mate. Just put it down there for us. Well, mind the notice, if I We could have the old staircase. Well, I have apologised, Kev. Lind, my name's Kevin. I don't know what else we can do. Come on, Kev. Kevin, actually. You know what snake Terry is. How he uses people. Tommy's a victim in all this. Remember how Terry used to treat Jack and Vera? The guy's a liability. Well, I'm just gobsmacked he got involved with him in the first place. I had you down as smarter than that. Right, well, can't we draw a line under it? Cheers, Kevin. Mr. Webster to you. <laughs> I'll go and make you the brew. Nice one. Right. I've got a job for you. Are you going to tell me what all this is about or what? Am I really going to say all that over the phone? Yeah, look, it's just that um, Tyrone and Kevin are going to be at the garage all day today. Meet me later. I'll text you where and when. Looking forward to seeing you, Tommy. He's going to drop a car at the garage tonight. You put this in the car. Is that it? What do you need a mechanic to do that for? Have a look inside. Is that cocaine? It's not candid at So, where's the car going? Abroad or what? Never you mind where it's going. Your face now, Tommy. One of mine. Good, isn't it? Now, this is the contact's name and his number. You can read, can't you? Yeah. You look nervous, Tommy, don't be. Look, do the job properly. There's nothing to worry about. You know, I do feel for you, mate, having that loser for a dad. He's left you in the lurch to sort out his problems, and that's bad. But the good thing is, you're proving to me you're a bigger man than he could ever be. And I like that, OK? I know you won't let me down. Coronation Street continues in half an hour. Okay, right. Yeah, no worries. You okay? Yeah, it's just got uh, it's got loads on the mind still. Well, your bounce back soon enough. Yep. That's what I'm saying. You're real okay looking up. Hundred percent. Still got loads of bits and bobs to finish off here anyway. Oh, mate, just leave it. Do what else to keep busy? Besides, instead of giving old schoolmate's car a once over, might be a nice little job. All right. Well, I can stay behind if you like. You know, have a word with him yourself. What? You don't trust me? Behave. Just saying. You know, if we're talking money, I should probably be here. Ty, I'm doing him a favour. Well, anything major, I'll send him in your direction, right? Now get off. Don't worry, both get in trouble, do we? Mm, just keeping you on your toes. All over, mate. All over. Don't work too late. Couple of hours tops. 
Evening. You're off an hour late. Sorry, all the roads round here look the same to me. Has the uh, governor filled you in on the job? Yeah. Well, fill the car up with drugs. First off, you might want to call it a merchandise or a package. All right, whatever. Look, just can we get on with this, please? Oi! I'm doing this for your benefit. Respect the process, or you might get pinched. Sorry. No worries. Right. The merchandise is carefully packed around the fuel tank and inside the door panels. Always wear gloves. Don't leave any fingerprints. Any questions? No. Focus on the job. Keep the boss happy. That's the ball game. Are we good? Yeah. Right. I'm out of here. Call the number he gave you before you finish. See ya. You know, team, you nearly give me an heart attack. I'm sorry. Yeah, seriously, you can't sneak up on me like that. I didn't sneak, I hobbled. Yeah, yeah well, you, you're supposed to be resting. Well, I got worried. We're all fine. Yeah, well, I know that now, don't I? Might help you get answered your phone once in a while. How come you're still here? Um, some guy came in last minute, you know, I didn't feel like I could turn down the overtime. I'll, uh, I'm sorry, I, I should have called you. Yeah, it's okay. Just let me know in the future, yeah? Yeah, will do. Um, look, why don't you go back to the house and put some cans in the fridge, eh? And I'll get us a takeaway on the way back. All right, sounds good. Don't be too long. Mm. Back before you know it. Evening. Your stuff's in the car. Any problems? Just you. What's with the sudden attitude? Attitude? You've turned me into a drug dealer. So call yourself distribution facilitator if it makes you feel better. Look, we're even. Come again. You hurt me. I'm not doing this again. Tom here, I hate to burst your bubble, but you owe me nine grand. I've just sorted your drugs. Yeah, and for that, I will generously wipe 250 pounds off the sleigh. Welcome to the real world. That was not the deal. What deal? Mate, I own you. Count yourself fortunate I'm not charging interest. You don't understand that. I can barely look my girlfriend in the face. What a lovely face it is. You don't scare me. Glad to hear it. we are doing our Johnny out of a job if I did. Listen, this doesn't have to be all pain, no gain. Keep me sweet. You might even make a few, Bob. So we good? I'll take that as a yes. Hey, boy. My contact said if he hadn't known the car was stuffed to the gills with goodie bags, he wouldn't have been able to tell. Well, that was the idea. Keep it up and everyone's a winner. I can't keep doing this. Yes, you can. I'll be in touch. <laughs> Who's that? That was, uh, that mate did that job for. Right, everything all right? Yeah. Please, be? never work. Uh, can I be bomb? Yeah, sorry. Tell you what, love. Come to me for your tea tonight and I'll throw in breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, I'd love to, but I'm uh, taking it. Oh, come on. What you need is a real woman, not that slip of a laugh. Step away, please, Bear. You're scaring the life out of him. <laughs> can you do us a favour? Yeah, I can try. It's Kirsty's birthday tomorrow. I've no idea what to get out. Will you sound her out for us? Oh, she's not said out. What about a birthday to us? <clears throat> Don't let on like I've said. <clears throat> if you change your mind about tea, you know where I am. Come on. Oh. What was that all about? Beth wants to make a man out of Tommy. That explains the look of terror. <laughs> How about your bar? Just good. Mmm. That's good. You can have it. Oh, I love you. I can do it to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How come you get the afternoon off? I'm taking it as holiday soon as you're asking. It's waste your holiday, cook it. Don't even waste my evenings doing that. That's why God invented microwaves, innit? Be fair, Ben, it's a bit different. Yeah, 
Precisely. I mean, imagine the mayor eating my hot pot. Well, oh. just stick to Betty's recipe, Sean. You can't go wrong. Thanks, Fistball. I like to think that Betty's looking down on me. Proud. Yeah. Best of luck. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Oh. oh, do you know, it's the only thing worth reading in this gazette, isn't it? Horoscopes. Right, let's see. Me, Libra. Oh, oh, I'm about to have a life-enhancing experience around water. Oh, must be getting a late call up to the Olympic swimming squad. <laughs> uh, yeah, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I can't believe all that stuff, surely. Oh, it's only a bit of fun, isn't it? Come on, what's your star sign? Gemini. Gemini? Really? So is it your birthday coming up? When? It's tomorrow, but I'm... Oh, cake's on you, then. It's tradition. All right. Fine. So, um, what's Tyrone buying you, then? Or is it just a surprise? I've no idea. <laughs> you must have hinted about summer. Not really. It's the only birthday I'm interested in is this one. Oh, yeah. When I was pregnant, you know, all I wanted was comfy slippers and chocolate. <laughs> hey, get him to throw you a party. Sorry. I really, really hate parties. It won't be for you, love. You're sorted. Lovely fella, baby on the way. Me and Fizz need to cough off before we forget how. Hey, speak for yourself! <laughs> Actually, I'm with Fizz. Comfy slippers. Evan. You, uh, you know that mate I was with this morning? The one you did a favour for? Yeah, well, um, he's asked if I won't mind doing some more jobs after hours. Why can't I come through the day like any normal punter? It's tight. I'm trying to do extra work. I'm top what I'm doing for you, so I can afford to pay you back what I owe you. It's going to take more than a few nights' work, that. Yeah, I know, but it's a start, isn't it? Go on, then. <laughs> hey, any luck with Kirsty? We've established one thing for sure. A middle name is not spelled F-U-N. Oh, she did say she'd like some comfy slippers. Which proves my point. Sure you don't want to come for your tea? I can leave these two tucking ironing boards and exciting presents like that. I, uh, promised Ty a pint, didn't I? Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Go on, <laughs> Comfy slippers. Who said wrong once I died? <laughs> hey, what am I gonna do? A brainwave. Did it hurt? It's a surprise party. See, I know Kirsty seems a bit standoffish, but that's just because she's shy. A party will help people get to know better. Genius or what? No. Yeah. Well, which is it? See you later, love. Uh, bye. Oh, I'm working. No, you're not. You said you got the night off. What, are you working or not? Uh, no, but there's no way I'm coming to your party. No offence. Why? But she won't want us our time. Yeah, yeah, she will. Yeah, right, OK. It's a chance to bury the hatchet. Well, I'm not going to take the risk. I'm sorry. Well, you'll come, won't you? Yeah, just said I'm not going to. I thought it was a mile offside, and their keeper shouldn't have even been on the pit. Hi, love. OK. Yeah, yeah, what are you having? Lamb and tonic. Lamb and tonic, please, Tina. Hi. OK, I'll look forward to seeing you there. Cheers. Bye-bye. That was Kirsty's mum. Her parents are coming now. All right, how'd you get them back? I got them from her address, but while she was at work... Well, just so you know, she's getting a bit twitchy in there. Is she? Telling a guy how to change a wheel over the phone. Can you not think of anything better? Right, well, can you take over? Anyone's name who's not been ticked needs ringing. Right, um, so have you met a parent yet, then, or Not yet, no, but... God, you know, it'll be a good time, birthday party, you know? If you say so. What if... Where is she? In the toilet. Right, well, I've, uh, I've done the rest, anyway. Good man. How many are coming? Uh, I, uh, take the ones which I guess. What's this? Nothing, it's just a job of us that... It's a list of jobs that need doing in the garage. Is there something I'm missing in that backyard? No. Huh? You've been gone ages. Have I? Hope this isn't to do with my birthday. What? All this coming and going and weird conversations. I don't know what you're talking about. I've told you I don't want to fuss. Yeah, I know. When I got the message. Mm. You'd better. Same again. Yeah, yeah cheers. Please. Have a pudding. Yes, of course we should. <laughs> if you can't treat yourself on your birthday, then... Nick, can we have the sweet menu, please? I just don't understand why we can't do this tonight. Wouldn't have had to rush, then. Well, maybe I've got other plans for tonight. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Puddings on the house. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So, uh, could we make a fuss of you at work, then? Hardly. Couldn't care less. Mind you, if my own family doesn't. I can't believe they didn't even send me a card. Well, they might have just missed the post. Yeah. Right. So what are you having? Hmm. Profiterate rolls or cheesecake? Hard decision. Well, I like profiterate rolls and I like cheesecake. <laughs> Why don't we order both and we can share? You are my kind of man. 
I do without you, eh? <laughs> Look. Hey, girls. Yeah. Kirsty's not coming out, is she? Uh, oh, no, she's in there reading a book. Oh. I'll to make friends and influence people. Please do me a favour. Take her out after work. Just give us a bit of chance to get the party ready. Yeah, cool. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm not going to be able to make it. Uh, our Craig's got an upset tummy. Right. You two are still all right for tonight, aren't you? Um, well, see, the thing is, I don't think we can get a babysitter, you know. Well, I thought Anna was going to do it. Oh, right. Yeah, she might not actually be able to do it. Oh, stop beating about the bush. The truth is, none of us want to come. <laughs> no, what she means is, none of us know Kirsty. She might be better with the mates. She hasn't got any mates round here. Really? It's all arranged now. Got a few surprise guests coming. Imagine if no one turned up. Yeah, go on, do it for Ty. Yeah, all right then. Oh, nice one. Is Tommy going? Yeah. OK, count me in. Great. You won't regret it. You're going to have a great night. Mm -hmm. All right, Thompson. See you later. Oh, wait, come on. Get busy. Ah! <laughs> this is just text on the way. Right, everybody quiet. Kirsty's coming. Have you all got your party poppers? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> This is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish he's flaming the real up. I'm getting crampy here. Yeah, I've got plans though, so. It's alright, it won't stay long. Surprise! What <laughs> nip? Did you see her face when she came in? She didn't look right pleased, did she? Shh, keep your voice down. Well, it's well, party and much fun when you can't drink. All the same, she could have pretended, though. Oh, poor time, oh. Really. To be fair, she did say she didn't want a fuss. I'm sorry. You really didn't want any of this, did you? How did you get him here bribing with free booze? No, no, they wanted to come. You are a terrible liar. I just wanted to do something special, that's all. Are you mad at me? How can I be mad at you? It's a lovely idea, even if it was a bit misguided. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, blow this. It's like being at a flipping oh. funeral. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, love. Show us what you've got. Do you want to dance? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll tell you what, though, it looks good. Yes, and you're eating for two. Uh-huh. <laughs> been the mystery guest. So how long do you reckon we should stay there? I've only just got here. Besides, Tyrone's a mate, isn't he? Yeah, well, I suppose. I've told Mum to ring in about an hour. She said there's been a family emergency. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Ta-da! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, I'd like to introduce Kirsty's parents, Ed and Alison. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. hi. Happy birthday, love. Thanks. So... Takes your boyfriend for us to get to see you these days, eh? <laughs> Thought I'd best invite you around, you know, before the baby arrives. <laughs> You're pregnant? You haven't told her? each other a few months. It wasn't planned. No, but we're both really happy about it, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Yeah, well, more fool you. Ed? Why don't I get you both a drink, eh? We don't want to spoil the party. It is Kirsty's birthday, love. Well, that's liven the party up any rate. Oh, poor Tyrone. It's not the best introduction to your future father-in-law, is it? Apparently he's a copper. Is that right? Yep. Retired, though. Just as well. I don't want to get interrogated by him. But How many months are you? Six. And it's going all right? Yeah, I felt fine. Oh, good. <laughs> and you're engaged? Yeah. So, when are you getting married? We thought we'd wait until after the birth. Yeah, less embarrassing that way. We're not embarrassed. Well, you should be. Ed. Oh, this is such a mess. Well, we don't think so. We're very happy, aren't we, darling? 
don't put words in her mouth. I am ha happy. What? Living in some two up, two down, marrying some loser who works in a garage. Hey, you're out of order, mate. It's all right, Tommy. Actually, I'm I'm the co-owner of the garage. <laughs> You know, they won't look kindly on the career gap. You could have made sergeant once you passed those exams. <laughs> oh, no, she couldn't. What's she talking about? Not in the police anymore. No. She worked in the knicker factory with us. <laughs> How the mighty fall, eh? Get her out of here. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I've not finished my can yet. Some, some sort of stupid joke. No. They asked me to leave. You mean you were sacked? Sorry, Dad. What were you sacked for? It doesn't matter now. I want to know. She doesn't want to talk about it, all right? No, I'm sure she doesn't. Jesus Christ, you know that. Don't talk to her like that. You had prospects. You were going somewhere because of me. What do you do? You just throw it all back in my face. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry isn't good enough. All right, you want to mess your life up? Fine. Just don't expect us to be part of it, okay? All right, come on. We're going. I said, come on. Deaf woman. Sorry. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Alison! Are you all right? What do you think? Come